With Final Fantasy VII Remake set for release this year, we're nostalgically looking back at the most impactful moments from the series so far. These RPGs have introduced millions of players to fantastical lands, colourful characters, and immersive stories. We've laughed, we've cried, we've wanted to cast Ultima on the damn game because I just can't drag these worthless besaid Aurochs through the semi-finals! For Bahamut's sake, Waka, just catch the damn ball! You do it in battle literally all the time! Ah, <sighs> sorry. Our chocobos are eager to race for the finest greens, mage mashers are at the ready and our pockets are full of gill. Let's earn some XP and take a look at this beloved series. Oh, but before we do, we're not considering any sequels, online adventures or spin-offs in this list, so rest assured that our coverage of this series certainly isn't final. <laughs> Pun intended, sorry. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 most iconic Final Fantasy moments. Number 10. Vivi confronts his past, Final Fantasy IX. The little black mage instantly became a fan favorite upon the release of Final Fantasy IX. Even during the first few missions, it's difficult not to be charmed by the adorable fella, regardless of the mysteries that surround him at the time. As with the majority of characters in the Final Fantasy universe, your party members bond through strife and learning to overcome their difficulties together with the power of friendship. Soon enough, we can't even bear to see any of them fall in battle and always have a tuft of Phoenix down ready just in case those Marlborough encounters go drastically wrong. So when our beloved Vivi learns that he is one of many identical black mages created artificially as weapons of war, it was all too devastating to see our favorite chirpy magic boy in such distress. Even worse, Vivi soon has to watch his former brethren sacrifice themselves to save both him and the party, leaving him emotionally adrift and entirely without purpose. Vivi may have been able to hide his tears under that big yellow hat, but we weren't able to hide ours. Number 9. Arya's Sacrifice Final Fantasy III some argue that this installment is best experienced via the 2006 English port to the Nintendo DS, mainly due to the improved graphics and narrative when compared with the Japanese original. Thanks to this upgrade, players were able to experience the full gravitas of Priestess Arya's sacrifice when she unfreezes the remaining areas of the world map. She joined the party as a guest and, having little countenance for fighting in the manner of a warrior or knight, was placed under the player's protection. Yet, when Lunith is attacked by Kraken, Arya lays down her life, sadly perishing while supposedly in our care. As the first character to receive a personalized musical number, Arya's selfless surrender reached new emotional heights in this iconic scene. This moment was so heart-wrenching, in fact, that Arya was subsequently honored throughout the series, appearing in Final Fantasy Brave Exvius and in Final Fantasy Dimensions II as a water elemental summon. Her sacrifice also immortalized her as a white mage icon, with Dawn of Souls and the 20th anniversary remake of the first installment automatically suggesting her original Japanese name, Elia, as the perfect choice for your party's healer. Number 8. Balam Garden Can Fly? Final Fantasy VIII Final Fantasy VII may have taken the first crucial step towards 3D gameplay, charmingly chonky character models notwithstanding, but Final Fantasy VIII used them to take a running leap into one of the most beautiful cutscenes of the PS1 era. Granted, this scene may be deemed by some tinfoil hat-wearing theorists to be part of Squall's dying fever dream, but we can't deny the visual majesty of the phenomenal 3D render, especially for the time. This unexpected turn of events was captured marvelously, transforming the school into essentially a mobile airship capable of limited flight. The sequence takes place after the sorceress Idea seizes control of Galbardia Garden and consequently lays siege to the neighboring schools, which prompt Squall and co to initiate a daring escape across the sea. As missiles descend upon the garden, the entire structure uproots itself in a flurry of explosions and scattered earth. By today's standards, we may expect a bit well, more excitement, but this was a notable instance of a surprising narrative twist being portrayed through genuinely groundbreaking means, a technological feat rarely seen before in video games. Number 7. The Sending Final Fantasy X we know, we know, Final Fantasy X is full of cheesy, corny moments, but it's lovable nonetheless. Yeah, the relationship between Blitzball star Tidus and Summoner Yuna is awkward and cringy, but what teen romance isn't? 
And let's not forget that this is also a game that absolutely blew us away with stunning visual sequences and an enchanting musical score. Water is an ongoing theme in this title, mirroring the ever-flowing passage of time and consequently the cycle of life and death that pervades all of Spira. It also acts as a universal image for cleansing, which is truly emphasised in Yuna's sending ritual. This funeral ceremony is conducted in the wake of an attack by Sin, wherein the young priestess performs her first ritual to help the fallen souls find peace in the far plane. The melodic yet haunting echoes of the ghostly faith drift across the shore while Yuna beautifully dances upon the water's surface, showcasing not only the game's graphical capabilities, but also significant emotional symbolism. As with Final Fantasy X as a whole, this is a bittersweet scene, offering both mournful remorse and a hope for peace. Number 6. Bahamut vs Alexander – Final Fantasy IX when you think of the staples of the Final Fantasy series, you may imagine chocobos, moogles, gravity-defying hairstyles, the strange popularity of the name Sid, and, of course, badass summons. These godly beasts have many iterations, but remain an iconic cornerstone for both combat and lore in many of the FF universes. They are often celestial beings, possessing vast dominion over elements and magics who can help or hinder the player in their lofty quests. But you may wonder, where did they come from? Are they truly gods? Why bother with the affairs of lowly humans? And most importantly, who would win in a fight between giant lightning man with epic moustache and terrifying ice queen with merciless frozen heart? Final Fantasy IX, at least, bestowed upon us a mighty showdown between series juggernauts Bahamut and Alexander. These legendary creatures were pitted against each other in one of the most epic sequences of the time, resulting in a portrayal that became iconic for Final Fantasy fans and general gamers alike. Forget Godzilla vs King Kong, real men or women prefer a clash of the Final Fantasy summons any day. Number 5. Kefka Wins – Final Fantasy VI these JRPGs certainly have their fair share of character sacrifices, emotional reunions and tragic backstories, don't they? And firing up any Final Fantasy game can probably guarantee you all three of these heartbreaking sucker punches, but the eighth title in the main series stacks that up to a ten-hit combo by actually letting the bad guy win at the end. Try as we might to stop him, the mad mage Kefka actually achieves his villainous goals. We just can't stop him. He tortures and kills the summons of legends, murders countless innocents, and finally achieves the godly mantle for which he so mercilessly strived. Although the party can gather their wits as well as some new weapons and abilities to finally trounce the villain for good, the damage has already been done. When the dust settles after the final battle, they are left facing a scarred and broken world. Magic no longer flows freely through the land, and the places and people they once knew are shadows of their former selves. Yeah, we may have won, but it didn't feel like a win at all. Number 4. Galaf's Last Stand – Final Fantasy V just like when your grandfather retells stories of grandeur from his younger days, it was quite a surreal experience to discover that the strange old guy that's been present throughout Final Fantasy V is actually the hero king of legend. In fact, he's already saved the world twice. I can't believe Grandad is a king. Even though Galuff may occasionally try dialing the TV remote instead of the phone, or is constantly perplexed by the concept of YouTube, you better show some respect to the old chap because he continues fighting even after his health reaches zero during his final battle. He's modest and lovable and always takes care of the rest of the party. Therefore, when he finally falls to X death, both the player and the party characters are dumbfounded and grief-stricken. The rest of the team even attempt to heal his fatal wounds, but to no avail. Yet still, Galuff resists the confines of death itself to assist his beloved granddaughter at the end of the game, granting her the strength and abilities to truly become a masterful warrior of light. Rest in peace, Grandpa Galuff. Number 3. The One-Winged Angel – Final Fantasy VII For fans of the original who are eagerly anticipating the release of the remake, this outstanding moment of Final Fantasy VII needs no introduction. The heated battle is paired with arguably the most iconic song in the entire series, One-Winged Angel, and pits our beloved characters against the famed Dark Angel himself, Sephiroth. With a sword as long as the fanfiction I'm currently composing about his hair care routine, this heralded antagonist faces down Cloud and the gang during his attempt to render the planet in twain beneath the impact of an impending meteor. 
This fight is completely breathtaking, incorporating gameplay beautifully with the tense narrative of this final act. The party battles against multiple versions of both Sephiroth and Jenova before Cloud goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with his nemesis for the final confrontation, rallied by an excellent musical score as well as the determination of the player clutching tightly at their PlayStation controller who's been ramping up to this moment for the whole game. Cloud, his friends, the player, and even the live stream itself rise to the occasion and ultimately take down this evil that seeks to destroy the planet, thereby saving the world we've grown to love and honouring those we lost along the way. To those who loved this world and new friendly company therein, this battle was for you. Number 2. Summon Knights of the Round, the Kings of Lucis. Final Fantasy XV. Okay, okay, just hear me out. It's all about that single quick time event. Seriously. It creates one of the most impactful endings for an emotionally invested player in the entire series. Up until the end of the game, our precious Chocker Bros have experienced so much together, helping Noctis blossom from a moody teen to a self sacrificing hero. Finally, as he faces down against Arden's vengeful spirit, the music builds, the spectres rally, and after hours and hours of bonding with the lovable lads, after fishing and camping and laughing after the best darn road trip this side of Hammerhead, the player is stopped dead by a single QTE to summon the Knights of Old, essentially the Knights of the Round, and to kill Prince Noctis. If that wasn't enough, the great voice talents of Ray Chase and Tatsuhisa Suzuki then rob the player of any residual stoicism with their fantastic performances. It's visually glorious as well as being harsh and downright painful, but in summoning one of the most famous and powerful forces in the entire Final Fantasy universe, we are forced to kill our main character. It's our choice. It's Noctis's choice. His destiny was written long ago, and all that's left is to embrace the sacrifice. Number 1. Farewell to the Flower Girl, Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, we know this probably doesn't come as a surprise, but how could our number one slot go to anyone else but Aerith? As this list shows, Final Fantasy isn't shy about killing off our beloved characters, but this death seemed far too early and far too cruel for our liking. By the time we find our gentle flower girl in the Forgotten City, she's been a key part of our team. She's a valuable healer, a love interest, and as a character, she's independent, kind, and enchanting. The player may even have already spent the time levelling her and seeking out her ultimate weapon, the Princess Guard. Her death is swift and entirely unexpected. There is no struggle, no fight, it just happens and it can't be reversed. Her innocent determination proves fruitless against Sephiroth's burning rage, which is a bold departure from the cliché of a heroine's purity being immune to evil. No matter how true her intentions were, she was no match for the one-winged angel. As Cloud commits Aerith to the livestream, we were left feeling as empty and heartbroken as the rest of the party, with trembling hands clutching the controller in disbelief and breath held as we hoped beyond hope for a resurrection that would never come. Unless you had a game shark, but that doesn't count. And there we have it. With such an expansive catalogue of entries, there are a load of iconic moments that we've missed out, but which ones are most memorable to you? Cecil finally becoming a paladin? Fang and Vanille's sacrifice? Why not share your favourite scenes with fellow viewers in the comments below? You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.